Welcome back to Stoffer Garage guys. Today's video is a highly requested one. We're gonna be doing an engine bay cleaning waterless style. And what I mean by waterless is we're not gonna be using a hose to rinse it down. We're not gonna be using excess water that's gonna get into your connectors, into your coil packs, into your distributors, into those places that you do not want water that's gonna make up your engine not run, not start, cause issues and cause electrical damage. The car we're gonna be doing the engine bay cleaning on is a 2014 Honda Odyssey with about 52,000 miles on it. Definitely has some road wear and tear from just water and dirt buildup over highway miles. But all I can say is guys, check out this before and after, and this is what your engine can look like if you follow this process. And before we get started guys, go ahead and smash that like button below, turn on notifications, subscribe to my channel because I have some awesome detailing content coming out and I wanna make sure you guys don't miss out on it. And I also want you to let me know in the comments below what detailing video do you guys wanna see next. So the items that you're gonna to need today for this engine degreasing video is some sort of dish detergent, some sort of degreaser. Um, brake cleaner and engine degreaser are always nice to have around if you have like an oil saturated engine from drips or from leaks. Uh, you're gonna need some warm water in some sort of container. You're gonna need several soft bristle brushes, some miscellaneous wire brushes if you have oxidation on your head or your block, gloves, some cloth rags, and then a vacuum is also extra handy when you have some collection of dirt in certain spots over trying to wipe it up when it's, once it's wet. So the first step to any engine cleaning video is to get on your rubber gloves and begin removing the panels and the different components that are easily accessible and easily removed. So in my case, the snorkel covers my battery for the intake, it's super easy to pull out and it makes it easier to clean once it's out of the car and do a more thorough job. One of the biggest things that you need to do whenever you do an engine cleaning video is to remove the battery. I can't stress that enough because having electrical current flowing through the car, even if you're doing a waterless cleaning, you still have the possibility of shorting out a connector, causing yourself some super big pain when it comes to troubleshooting an electrical fault or an electrical issue. So remove the battery, and it also makes it easier to remove underneath the battery in your battery tray where there is usually a collection of some sort of dirt or battery uh, acid corrosion or anything like that. And in my case, you can see here on the bottom of the battery tray how much dirt is actually collected here. This is where the shop vac comes in, making it super easy to suck all that dirt up, get it out of the way without having to wipe it up or deal with it. This is also a perfect opportunity to go around the rest of the engine bay with your vacuum to get into those nooks and crannies where dirt and sand has collected and go ahead and use the vacuum for it instead of trying to wipe it down later once we've had the soapy water applied. It makes it super easy, super convenient, and gives, saves you some time in the long run by doing this step up front. So now let's go ahead and get started with the actual cleaning process. Here I have my warm water, I'm adding some Dawn liquid detergent to it, and I have my soft bristle brush that I'm gonna to use to mix up the water and to do the rest of the cleaning job in the engine bay. Even though we're not using a hose or a large amount of water to clean the engine bay, I highly recommend covering the intake to your engine, some sort of blockage for it. Here I'm just using a rag to cover it to ensure that no dirt or anything else gets in there. But now it is time to grab that bristle brush and soapy water and begin going around the engine bay in a small like quarter section of what you're working on and start using the brush and the soap to agitate the dirt and the grease that has built up on your engine and move it around before we get to the next step. The real reason why you wanna work in a small area is because you're not using a ton of water here and you don't want that soapy water and that dirt to re-adhere back to the surface and dry out. So before you get too far along, grab your towel and wipe down those surfaces and dry up that soapy water and that dirt and lift it off the surface. And if you have to, repeat the same process in the same area if you still have grease left over. You could always bust out the engine degreaser or the brake cleaner if you have on some sort of metal part. Um, if you need a more serious cleaning, but for the most part, I think using the Dawn or using the brushes that I've showed here should be sufficient. Like I mentioned earlier, newer cars in particular, they have these plastic panels like this one shown here that covers the radiator. They're super easy to remove, so I recommend just pulling them off the car and working them on on a different surface. It also allows you access to underneath those panels where dirt is also built up as you can see here. By removing them, it allows you to get to all surfaces on your car, even if you would typically not ever get to them. I can guarantee that if you remove your valve cover and we're working on your spark plugs or working on something underneath there, having it cleaned will make it a much more pleasant experience. Thank you. 
aluminum intake manifolds or any head or block in particular here. Um, this is where the wire brushes come in handy because of oxidation that aluminum naturally has just from the environment. Or if you have grease caked on, the wire brushes definitely come in handy in this case. There are several places around the engine that I feel people neglect to even consider cleaning. Like in this case, underneath the windshield wiper cover, underneath, you know, around the brake fluid container, those are areas that you most likely will touch more often than not. So go ahead and take the extra step to clean them. It's like when you're doing an exterior engine cleaning or you're actually drying your car after a car wash, wipe down your door panels, wipe down around the door trim, wipe down behind the gas cap cover. Because to be honest, if you get in and out of your car, the next most often place visited is probably your gas cap. But by cleaning those areas, you get just that extra added benefit of having a clean vehicle. So this step is where that, ec so that earlier step where we remove the valve cover piece and that front cowling comes in handy because right, you have it off the vehicle, you can use extra water, extra soap to get the dirt and grime off. And then when it comes time to rinse it off, you can just go use the hose and rinse off the soap and water. So if you have the opportunity to do so, I highly recommend it. It allows you to get to 90% of the engine bay by doing this because this, I mean, this is the biggest components in this vehicle in particular. It might not be for your car, so take that for a grain of salt. But if your vehicle does have the opportunity to take off these larger pieces and do it off the vehicle, it'll make it for a much better finish. So those large pieces were the last piece of the puzzle for me. Once you have everything kind of cleaned up, it is now time to reassemble everything. The first step is to kind of put your battery back in the car, hook up your electrical connectors, and put everything back on, including your battery tie. Then start reassembling the cowling, reinstart installing the valve cover piece. Any of those components that you remove to clean off the vehicle, now is the time to put those back in. So for those of you who have been subscribers to my channel, know that I really like using the 303 products. And in this case, I'm using the 303 Aerospace Protectant to spray on the engine, spray it across the entire surface, every nook and cranny to cover all those components because one, I don't like a greasy finish and 303 Aerospace Protectant leaves more of that matte, black, bright finish that I like the most. And also it has a UV protectant, so that's why I use it on my interior. If you guys are interested in picking up this product and using it as well, I have a link in my description box, so make sure you guys go check it out if you wanna pick it up. But once I've sprayed it on the entire engine, I'm using a rag just to kind of wipe up the surfaces that have collected the excess liquid, so that way it's not leaving any streaks or anything like that. Minivan engine bay, guys, you have to admit, the finish and the actual end result is hugely different than when we started. As you can see here, everything is cleaned up, the plastic shines, the color is more bright, and to be honest, if you ever had to work in an engine bay that's clean, it makes it so much easier to work on because it's pleasant to look at. Whereas a dirty engine bay, and if you're working on a valve cover gasket or something, you gotta worry about contaminants and dirt getting in there. So having a clean engine bay is more than just a cosmetic appearance. I think it's common practice that everyone should exercise because you wanna have a clean surface to work on so you don't damage other components. It's just a typical maintenance practice that everyone should follow. So these before and after shots don't do it justice. In person, it looks 10 times better than it does here. And the end product was amazing. And guys, I want you to leave any comments below of any questions you have on your specific engine, what you should do. And if you guys have any suggestions on what you would do differently, leave them in the comments below. I'm always open to new tips and advice and different criticisms on what I could do differently to make it look even better. And here's that before and after shot again that we showed at the beginning. It looks amazing. And if you guys haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.